so pretty. Look at your little Good pajamas. Morning. Today's the 21st. Oh, birthday. For the 21st, what am I going to get? What books do we have left? We, we have six 13, books 16, 20, 22, 26, and 31. A lot of 20s, huh? A lot of 20s. Let's see what I'm going to get. Oh, wait. Jordan, tell us about Fourth Wing. Oh, it was really good. I loved it. I finished it in two days. Oh. Yeah, she's obsessed. I loved it so much. So I started the second book. Wow. You're good. Okay, now let's see what I'm going to get. I'm only slightly jealous. <laughs> Come on, thumb, do your thing. 16! 16! Yes, that Hard looks back. like soft back. Soft back. Soft back. Tiny's here. Oh, the baby down the top. <laughs> You know what it is? No. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah, the hints are not very good there. Okay, now. 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 Now, that told me a lot. Oh, yeah. Not. Right okay, there. I've got to actually see something. No. <gasps> brown. It's brown. Lots of brown. <laughs> Different brown. Oh. Ooh. Hmm. It looks like the Shadow of the Wind, but I already own that, so it's not that. Huh. Ooh. You forgot this one? I don't know. Oh, that doesn't tell me anything except it's got beveled edges. Oh. Nope, not beveled. No. Painted? No, what do you call these guys? The the I can't think. <gasps> it's a building! Yeah. It says, <gasps> Ooh! The Gollum and the Ginny by mm. Helen Wecker. I've heard really good things about this book, and I've been very curious about it for a while. Is that a fantasy? Yes. So I'm very excited about that one. And it's a pretty book. What a pretty book. And it's got, oh, if I need a book that has um, foiling, it's got foiling. And deckled edges, that's deckled. the word. What is it called? Deckled. When the edges are like this. Oh, I've never heard of that. Now it is the Jordan's turn. Day 21. Day 21 in Jordanville. So it's right up against Oh, what are you going to do about your uh, challenges? Because you're going back home to the wife. So we're going to shove everything into one day. We can all get a delicious treaty drink, uh -huh. which Christmassy uh -huh. drink. We can all go see the lights. True. It'll be the time when I talk to Char, which is my long distance person. Yes. Or long time person. And then, oh, and then we watch some cheesy Christmas movies. Oh, yeah. When is this? Well, when she goes back. It might back. be in the early morning. <laughs> But we've got to find out what you got for 21. Yes, let's find out. We'll add to the list of things we're going to push into one day. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay. My book, book first. first. Book first. Book first. Book first. What's the book? 20. 20. Yeah, all right. It's a big one. Ooh. Ooh. Hard Jordan gets all the big, the expensive, the good books. And mystery thriller. And, yeah, yeah, let's see if this is a horror thriller mystery. Stay with our trend. Ooh. Amy oh. White. She kind of broke. She looks like sci fi. Look, based off that, looks like sci fi. Yeah, it looks like sci fi, right? Yeah. Oh! oh. Mm, hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's. I got deckled pages as well. Oh! It is, it is sci-fi. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> it's sci-fi. I think that was from... Michael Crichton, yeah? Yeah, I think that one was from um, Habitat for Humanity for a awesome. dollar. Airframe. So he's the guy who wrote Jurassic Park. Ooh. And I really love Jurassic Park. So that'd be fun to get a sci-fi. Sci-fi. Yay, you broke your trend. You got a fantasy now of sci-fi. Gee, three passengers are dead, 56 are injured. All right. Yay. Yay. Okay, so thriller. Sorry, thriller. <laughs> oh, oh, and that, so that was from, I'm pretty sure that was from uh, Habitat for a dollar. Is it saying yes. that? Yeah. So this one is a dollar on the inside. From Habitat. And then this one I forgot to say. I think this is from the place in Ferndale. And that was $7.95. Yes, this was the place in Ferndale. My challenge is buy a 50 cent Habitat book. Oh, oh good. That'll be fun. So we'll just add that into our day. Yeah, that's easy. It's going to be a very long day. 50 cents Habitat book. No problem. Means paperback. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay. There's oh. good paperbacks. There may be fantasy there. Ooh. That's where I got Vespertine. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. I'll add it to my list. Are you 21. ready? 21. Got a little deer on there. Let's see what book I get. Woohoo! What book are you going to get? What book are you going to get? 26. 26. 26. And that's our big move. Ooh, a big one. Heart, wow, I've been lucking out. Right. Okay, let's see if we can find out. Make Amy guess. Yeah, make Amy guess. Ooh, Ooh that tells me a lot. Blue. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anything to Amy. Oh, it's a book of the month book. Ooh. Oh, is that what that BOT means? Yep. Oh, there's nothing on the back. Wow. Oh, mom says she's been not feeling her. Um, the silence of the girls. The mis the mythology. <laughs> 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 this is a mythology All retelling. Right. Woohoo! Oh, well, good. Supposed to be, and Pat Barker's supposed to be an amazing winner of the um, Greek Book. mythology reteller. Oh, reteller. Okay. So I wonder what girls. This is from the girls' perspective. You know how all Greek mythology is like super male centric. This has got more of a female perspective. So you really are in your uh, mythology. mythology. Era. So Helen is in here. Another woman, Briseis. Briseis, yeah. Briseis. So she was queen of the Troy's neighboring kingdoms. Agamemnon. Agamemnon. Good Agamemnon, job, mom. Yeah. Keenly. Okay, Briseis is apparently telling a lot of this. It's one dollar. That at... was also from Habitat. Oh, right. wow. cool! It looks brand new. That looks beautiful. Woohoo! I've been doing mythology, mythology, yeah. so this works for me. Good morning. It is December twenty second, and I am still having the fun COVID December blues. And I tested this morning, and I'm still solid line, doing pretty good, sticking with it, sticking with that COVID. So. Um, I'm a bit frustrated about that because I was hoping that I would at least get a couple of days where I could run around with a mask on and do some Christmas shopping and enjoy the holidays. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. And it turns out we're not going to be doing Christmas over at Nancy's anyways on the 25th because I keep testing positive. And plus, it's only going to be us. Like, Jordan is going back home to visit her wife and then her wife is coming back here so that they're going to spend New Year's with us. And we are all doing like a family gift exchange. And so we're gonna wait until the 31st to do that or the 30th or something along those lines. So we're not even having our Christmas celebration with the whole family until like the 30th or 31st. So part of me is like, maybe we should just change Christmas day this year for me and my family, not for you. Uh, just change it to the 30th or the 31st. And once I test negative and start being able to feel better, start doing some of those Christmassy things that I haven't been able to do for the last week that I wanted to do. I'm really bummed. <laughs> I'm just, this is not what I was hoping for. This is never what I'm hoping for. So I apologize if my vlogs are a little not fun because they're not fun for me either. <laughs> I'm just like, what do I film? I'm just sick. Again, still sick. Don't have much energy. Uh, very distracted. Not a lot of brain power for reading and stuff like that. So it hasn't been my best time. Okay, so update, update, update. I have been listening to the Pumpkin Spice Cafe for a good majority of the day and playing Candy Crush while I was listening to it. And I can tell you the problem was the book I was reading before because I'm listening to this on audiobook and I'm just enjoying myself. It is so much fun. Makes me want to watch Gilmore Girls because it's really giving me Gilmore Girl vibes. Is it the most deep book story so far no but is it exactly what i wanted this that comfort romance small town cute like i'm loving the two main characters and the little romance that's starting between them or being hinted at at least like there's not that much that's going on but i'm just having so much fun with this right now this is exactly what i want it's super cozy and our main character whose name i can't remember right now because when i listen to names on audiobook if I don't see them, I don't remember. 
What is her name? Jillian? No. Jill? Jillian? His name is Logan. Her name is something. Very bad, Amy. Okay, well, hopefully I'll remember it next time I have an update. She was working in New York City or Boston or... I don't know. I don't know anything about this. She was working in some city. <laughs> <laughs> and she had a pretty strong career going, but she worked a lot. Her life, aside from her job, wasn't... There wasn't much going on, at least. And she found her boss dead. Like, he had a heart attack or something, and it kind of threw her through a loop. And this place that she's taking over, this cafe, is her aunt's place. Uh, I guess she was her aunt's favorite, and her aunt has decided to retire. And so she's come to take over this cafe to kind of get her life back on order, figure things out, because she's sort of had a existential crisis ever since finding her boss dead. She's coming into this tight-knit community where she runs into this grumpy but cute Logan, who's the farm owner. And she's getting to know all the people. We're getting to know all the community members as well. And right at the beginning of this, she goes to town meeting, which is very Gilmore Girls. And the behaviors of the people within the town meeting are very Gilmore Girl vibes. So I am really, really enjoying all the nods. And it's just fun. It's so cute. And it's heartwarming. So definitely my two star stands for Christmas Every Day by Beth Moran. Just not a book for me. Now, aside from listening to my audiobook for a good majority of the day, I just got off the phone with one of my best friends, Lizzie. This is a friend I've had since high school. We have been very close most of our lives, well, you know, since high school. And yet she's one of those friends where We'll go for periods of time where we don't talk to each other, not intentionally, but we just kind of fall out of contact in some ways. Not that we couldn't always contact each other, just that, you know, life gets busy. She's got a family. I've got things going on and we don't always contact each other often. But when we do, it's just like, you know, nothing has ever changed and we love chatting with each other. She's a teacher also. So we just had so much fun talking teacher today. And she's excited for me that I finished my program. We just talked and talked and talked about everything for a long time. And it was so good to catch up with her. We're planning a trip for her to come up and visit sometime soon. So it was wonderful to catch up with a friend who I haven't talked to for a while. And yet our relationship has always been very, very strong. I'm so happy that I got that activity where I call five people I haven't talked to in a long time because it gave us a chance to reconnect and just, you know, just adore each other again. So I have done one and I've got four more to go. I'm pretty sure, well, I don't know exactly who I'm going to be talking to, but I've got a few I already know that I'm going to be talking to. So I'm very excited to catch up with these people in my life that I love, that I just don't get to talk to very often. Okay, her name is Jeannie. Who's Jeannie? The girl in the book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on day 22 now. Do, 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 do. Day 22. Day 22. Oh, no. Oh. <gasps> oh, it's my gift. It's my gift. Oh, a lot of gifts. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh my god, what is this? <gasps> what is this? What They're is mysteries. This? Oh my gosh! Make sure. Oh, there's another one! <gasps> there's a bunch of them. Oh, wow, what are those? I don't know. Okay. It's called mini bands. They're mini those brand. mini brand. These are Disney little figurines, but they're <laughs> mystery. We don't know what they are. How exciting. Oh. Mini brand. Yep. So don't look until we, we yeah, don't don't spoil yourself. No. Alrighty. <gasps> okay. Here we go. First one first. Oh it's oh uh, oh hold oh, on. Oh it's Spoonie. Or what is name? Spork? What's his name? What's his name? Oh look at how cute those Sporky. are. Sporky. That is so cute. He's, He's so, so small. Sporky. What is his name from I'm pretty sure it's Sporky. Forky. Forky. <laughs> How cute! Oh, that is so cute. I it's love in the little them. container. That's so cute. It's so cute. Mini brands and some really cute things. Adorable. Where did you find those at, Ain? At Target also. Boop, boop, boop. Those are the same company that does the books that I got. The, the yeah, little mini books. Cute. Next one. Next one. This is so cute. Oh, is that? It is Iron Man. Ah, that's awesome. He's so small. Oh, cute. Oh yeah. my god, oh, those look are how cute. cute it is. It's got the little plastic container and everything. Yes. That is insane. And the whole back looks like it's all set up. Oh, it even got a little That's barcode. So cute. He's adorable. He's I ridiculous. Love him. 
I love him. I really do. All right, next is this one. This one's next. Who did we get? Who did we get? It is. Oh, it's Princess Rapunzel! It's too tight for her. Okay, so I didn't get to see her. These are so cute. These are adorable. Okay, Come she's on. got two more. Okay, this is my next one. <laughs> mystery. <laughs> Mom and I used to always get these like different kinds of mystery thingies. We love mysteries. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love him! What's his name? <laughs> Bullseye! Oh, oh, another thing from um, Toy Story. Toy Story. How cute! That is so cute. Come on, stop focusing on Jordan. Look up, look over here. Yeah, you're cute. These are so cute. Adorable. I love Bullseye. In this set here, you could get the cowboy or that's adorable. The girl, Jesse, or uh, not Jesse, the other girl, oh. Bo Peep. Bo Peep! I love the Toy Story movies. Yeah, they're Does so good. Does it say Forky? And I like the fourth one. Yeah. Some people didn't like the fourth one. I liked it. Do you remember the fourth one? I don't know. Ah, it's one with Bo Peep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, these are so adorable. All right, I got one more. One more! One more! You should do that. Oh my gosh! As a child, she's so cute! Little girl Anna. Oh, Anna. And she wanted to play it's with her sister. So you want to build bad. a snowman? Oh, how cute. Let's go and play. Oh, look how cute she is. <laughs> I know. Now mom's crying. Your turn, mama. 22. Who's that guy? That is Gerald. Gerald. From Funny, Funny Dory. <gasps> Oh, I love it. Number four. Oh, you're going on a scavenger I'm hunt. Going on a scavenger hunt. hunt. Let's see what number four says. To find your gift within, you might check in Cece's bone bin. Yeah. <laughs> bone bin. What's funny is it? Um, don't look at the state of the bone bin because I think it's dusty. <laughs> What's funny is I was looking for something. Just whipping through those days, aren't we? Yeah. Faster than you. No, think. we're not. These are all different days. What are you talking about? We're all wearing the same clothes. We're not oh, wearing the same underwear. Oh, oh yay, underwear. No, it's it's a bag for all your goodies. Oh, oh, that's cute. That is so cute. That is really drawstring. I like drawstrings. Yeah. That's Put adorable. My million bucks in here. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Don't I tell don't everybody we have a million bucks. <laughs> they, they won't know because it's in my Disney bag. <laughs> That's right. Well, they will. This is now, on the internet. They will. All right. What's my day 22 gift? Ooh. 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 Oh, what is this? What is Mojito. Leon Pastille. What is this? Are they candies? Oh. I think they are. Oh, cute! They're little oh, yeah. candies. Oh, steals candy. Yes, that's right. These. This sounds awesome. Product of Italy. I don't think I'll use it right mm. now, but these are adorable. Yeah, I love mojitos too. Mm. How cute! Cece's got her outfit on. Look at that. Aww, Look at how cute so she cute. is. Run around so we can see your butt. Run around. Come on, Cece. Hey, Come here, please. Come here. Look how cute you are. <laughs> you got your pajamas on. Look at your little friend Penny's got her pajamas on too. Good morning. It's December 23rd. And here's the thing. <laughs> I finished the Pumpkin Spice Cafe yesterday. That's by Lori Gilmore. And basically, December 22nd consisted of me sitting on my couch, listening to the Pumpkin Spice Cafe on my phone, and playing Candy Crush all day long. That was it. Oh, and blowing my nose 20 million times because that's where I'm at with COVID. I'm at the extreme congestion, sneezing, 
uh, this. It's all here now. And this is the best. This is the best it's been so far. So I'm happy with that. So trying to think about how I can create a vlog out of that just seems a little, I don't know. I did talk to my friend Lizzie, so that was amazing, but I had, didn't have any footage of that. And I'm not gonna have any footage of the other four people that I talked to because I talked to them on my phone, which is also what I film on. So uh, there's just not much that I could put in that vlog. So what I decided to do is to find out what is day number seven. And hopefully in the next couple of days, I will have a little more interesting content I hope. I'm still testing positive for COVID, so I can't go anywhere still. But I'm just hoping that with a physical book or, well, if I have an activity, then that's, and then I'll find out what number eight is also. But like, I'm hoping that it'll give me something more to add to this vlog. So this is actually going to be a three, maybe four day vlog because of the activity possibility. So we'll see. First, I want to tell you about the Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. I went and looked at the ratings on this and they're incredibly low. And I'm wondering if people thought this was a cozy mystery and that's where they got upset with it because to me it felt like a very generic but very fun romance. I had so much fun reading this. You know, when it comes to romances, it really does depend on the tropes you enjoy and uh, it depends on the setting, depends on a lot of different things. But romances are pretty similar, especially if there's nothing new about them. And this was one of those romances which was a very standard romance. But it was exactly what I wanted, considering I wasn't enjoying the Christmas book I was reading for day four? Yeah, day four. I wasn't enjoying that Christmas book at all. I can confirm that I wasn't enjoying it because I wasn't liking the book. I was just having such a fun time reading this. And this is definitely not the best written romance. It's not the most exciting, but it gave me all the vibes I was looking for. I enjoyed the smutty scenes. I enjoyed the two couples that came together. It was a little too convenient at the end and that got maybe a little, a little more boring at the end. Not boring, but like, I think my excitement for it started fading out a teeny bit as I was reading this book, but ultimately it was exactly what I wanted. And so I'm gonna give this a 3.75 stars because a lot of romances, especially very generic romances like this, I give a 3.5, 3.75. But because this one made me so happy to read it and I couldn't put it down yesterday, I just, like I said, sat on the couch and listened to it all day long, I am gonna give it 3.75 and I did really enjoy it. I will read more from this series because they do set you up for some of the other romances. And I don't know, it's a setting thing. It's the characters. I enjoyed the characters and it did give me Gilmore Girl vibes, which was a huge intention of this book was for those Gilmore Girl vibes. And so now I really want to start rewatching that series. <laughs> I don't want to hold that up the whole time. Let's see, let's do that. There, okay. <laughs> My makeshift light cover. Okay. Now let's talk about day number seven. So for day number seven, this is the line, and we'll do some caroling. So the Christmas book is We'll Always Have Christmas by Jenny Hale. And to be honest, now that I've read a lot of seasonal and then Christmas books, I will be happy if I get this, but I'm not really in the mood for it at the moment. I wanna switch things up a little bit. So we'll see if I get this. I'm not gonna be upset though. I'm not gonna be upset if I get it. It's just, I'm kind of ready for something a little different at the moment, but I'm just happy that I've got some physical books because I'm tired of the eBooks and the audio books and stuff. I'm ready for something I can hold and, and read. The non christmas book is The Book Woman of Trouble, Some Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. And this is actually the book that I'm most interested in reading right now. I just feel like this is what I want to sink my teeth into at the moment. And I have heard really good things about this one, but it also just feels like something a little different than what I've been reading in the last few days. And so I think I just want a little bit of a change up. And so that's kind of why I'm most intrigued by this one. But I really don't know too much about it aside from that, except that she's a book woman and I love bookish books. So cross your fingers for me because I'm really hoping for this one. And then finally the activity, <laughs> which I'm also not overly excited for right now. I feel like I'm not excited for everything now that I've got COVID. The activity is to go caroling that's not gonna happen. Or learn a new Christmas carol, which I could do. My singing right now is is uh, not the prettiest, but I could learn a new Christmas carol. So let's see what I'm gonna get for day seven. I am excited. I mean, I'll be happy with any of these choices. I will be, but I really, I'm really hoping for the book woman of Troublesome Greek. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I manifested the five phone calls. I can manifest this. You will be in there. 
you will be in there. Let's find out. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Why didn't this come up last year? <laughs> Learn a new Christmas carol. Okay, so I will be learning a new Christmas carol, which is fun actually because in that Christmas poems book, there are Christmas carols in the back and they're listed as poems, but I know a lot of those old old poems were Christmas carols or have become Christmas carols. So I might go and look and see if there's anything back there that's interesting that I could learn as a song. And we'll see, and I'll keep you posted and maybe I'll sing it for you, but I don't know if that's a wise idea right now because it's not gonna sound very nice. So I'll be opening another one, day eight. You will get a sentimental feeling when you hear and I'm actually excited about this one. I'm excited about any of these coming up because they're different than what I've been reading so far and the activity is something I can do here at home. You will get a sentimental feeling when you hear. So sentimental I used for create a photo album for my dad. So I have a whole bunch of old pictures from my youth, from when my dad was younger, a lot of really, really cool pictures that I want to put together in a photo album for him. And it would be nice for me to be able to do that because it's a project that's been sitting around waiting for me to do it for years. And I just think it would be nice for me to finally get to it. <laughs> this is a good time because I'm stuck in the house. Uh, I haven't felt like doing crafty stuff in the last few days. Like COVID doesn't make you want to do things like that. But because I'm coming on the other end of it where it's just congestion, I think I might be ready to start doing more crafty stuff. The second possibility is my nonfiction, Pleasurable Kingdom, Animals and the Nature of Feeling Good by Jonathan Balcombe. And this is something so different than what I've been reading right now that I feel like I would really, really enjoy this. So I'm actually, would be happy with this. I'd really be happy with this. And then finally for sentimental feeling, because this had the word feeling in it for feeling good. So when you hear my Christmas book is Hear Them Ring by Aaron Mangum. And this is a book of four short stories. And I think that that might be interesting as well. I don't know if these are like lighthearted, if they're, ro I don't think they're romance. I don't know, maybe they're romances? Maybe they're romances, but this might be fun because it's just four separate short stories. I think that would be also a good time. So I'm happy with any of these coming up. So let's see what does come up. <laughs> if an activity comes up, I'm not gonna open another one. I'm just gonna wait until I get some of these things done because that's a lot going on. So if the activity comes up, I'm just gonna work on the activity and we'll finish out this vlog with what, what is it? I have to finish calling five other people. I need to learn a new Christmas carol and I would need to create the photo album for my dad. So let's find out what's gonna happen on day eight of the 12 Days of Christmas Carol Advent Calendar Challenge. Dana Braid. Okay. What do you think it's gonna be? Here's our little... Christmas book. <laughs> let's see. What do you think, Jordan? Uh, little bit carol. That we already picked pick that. Oh, Christmas book. <laughs> it's the activity again. Oh my goodness. Create the photo album gift for my dad. Well, I'm very excited about that actually. So I will be working on this in the next day or so. I will also learn a Christmas carol and I will finish calling four other people that I haven't talked to in a while. I've actually caught up with another friend recently that I haven't talked to, but she lives in Spain. So we've just been messaging back and forth. So that I'm not counting it as one of the options, but we have caught up but I haven't talked to her in a while. So that's a good thing about this is that it's just getting me thinking about people I haven't talked to in a while and reaching out to them. It's day 23. Woohoo! And I've day got, 23. Is that Alice in Wonderland? It is Alice. Okay. Very nice. What Let's do you got? It's a book day. It's a book day. Okay. 22, the one ah. on top. Oh, day nice 22. This is our last book. It's a <laughs> soft cover. Let me see our what last if one. Amy can guess this one because she's the guesser. Just the itty bit. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. I know which one that is. Wow. Oh, I the one that's on the right. Way. I forgot oh, I got this it? one. Yeah. How'd you know? This uh, one sounds so cute. It does sound so cute. In fact, it's quite cute. cute. Ah. Yep. By Meryl Wittlesner. Wittlesner. You don't have to slowly do it anymore, Mom. 
Look at all <laughs> this. must be a really good book. Everyone gives it a lot of good time. Cleat cute. Nothing sexier than playing hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> than playing hard. <laughs> <laughs> to get. And there's no to get there. And this oh. was $18 probably at Village Books? Yeah, that was from Village Books. Wow. Woohoo! I got one of your uh, sapphics. Yeah. Yeah, it is sapphic. our sapphic. It's book. our sapphic book. I got it for all of us. Oh, yay! Just like all of our books. Are yeah, for all of us. exactly. Okay, let's see which one I got. Nice. On day 23 with my little mermaid. Oh, Can't look at one's one three and one's three one. Ooh, did they get one three or three one? I got three one. Three one. Oh, I think this might be the free book. Hardcover. Yep, I think this might be the free book. Yay! So I went to a little free library and picked up a book from this little free library that's fairly close to us. That's always has really good books in it. Whoever curates their little free library does a great job. And this is one of the books that was in there. I'm pretty sure. She hasn't I'd be opened surprised it yet, if it wasn't she... because it hasn't shown up otherwise. She's really? kind of hard. She's already, she already broke it. Oh, that's right. She went. Yep. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, I've already read that one. Is this, did I get this one also? Yeah, soft cover. I got the soft cover. Did I get the same one? Oh. Hey, I can tell you. Oh, that's lame. Oh, no. Oh, local woman I didn't realize. That, that is not hilarious. Realize. This one was from the little free library. It was free. I thought it was a different book. Different book. It's the same book. Oh, the same my book? gosh. Oh, well, I got Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. And that was one mistake for the whole thing. Not so bad. No, 36, 36 books. 36 books. What? I swear, I thought I got a different book. What I wonder which one you got, George. I wonder which book I got. Wouldn't it be funny if it was a different number? This is 23. Yeah, look at it. this big old thing, and let's open it. Open. Do, 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 do. I forgot that you get a prompt also. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, you do. Let's does. look inside. Oh, never mind. All right. Okay, so my book is... Surprise, surprise. 13. Ah. Oh, oh the last one. one. How did that Let's find out. <laughs> Does Amy remember this one? Okay. No. Ready, she ready? looks for the. I don't remember anything. <laughs> oh, it's more of the wrapping paper. Oh, there's a yellow in there. There's, yep, yellow there's in some there. yellow. Oh, wow. Nope, no clue. <laughs> I like the way you made this. Based off. Oh. Yes, I do know. It's a uh, I'm pretty sure that's fantasy. Oh, how exciting. Yep, and that's also sapphic, I think. Ooh, how exciting. All right, let's see. She Who Became the Sun. Ooh. By Shelley Parker. Trader. This looks beautiful. Yep. Oh, it's fantasy? 1899. Mm -hmm. Yep, Ooh, that was from Village Books. Says, She Who Became the Sun is epic, tragic, and gorgeous. Yes. It'll wreck you and you will be grateful. It'll wow. make you really grateful. You're going to be crying. That sounds rough. And you're going to be happy that you're crying. That's so exciting. Woohoo! All right. So you broke your streak. Broke my streak. Yep. With the last one. Well, sci fi, too. No. Oh, actually, no, we said and that was more thriller, didn't we? Yeah, more thriller. I did. I've had one. Yeah. Oh, I had my two fantasy that came together. The last three. That's right. Okay. okay. What is your final? My... Is it my final one? Final prompt. Yeah, yeah that's the final prompt. Final prompt. Read a scary winter read. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd gotten this sooner. Yeah. But yes, all right. I do have a couple. Well, I don't think I have any more scary winter ones. Winter? You might. Oh, I do. I have uh, one, one and one and one. Oh, one, one by one by one. By one. Yep, mm -hmm. that's wintry. All right. Woohoo! 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 Second phone call done. I called and left a message for my dad and... My dad and I are close. We're not very good at contacting each other. So we can go for long periods not talking to each other. And then, you know, it's nice when we get to catch up. And all of a sudden I got a phone call from him from Poland. Apparently he's out visiting my babsha in Poland for the holidays. And so that was really nice. We got a chance to chat. It's evening time for him and he was practically falling asleep because he's still got jet lag. But we talked for a while. We got caught up. I got to hear the news about what's going on with my family there. And he got to hear all the news about what excitement I'm having right now with COVID. 
And so we just got to have a good time chatting. And I wish I could be in Poland right now for the holidays. That would be a lot of fun. I really want to go to the Christmas markets over there. It's also a very expensive time of the year to go there. So I'm glad that he's representing the family and visiting my grandma. And so I feel good that actually I got a chance to talk to my dad and I will be making him the photo album. Very excited about that, working on that. I think he's gonna be just ecstatic, especially because my grandma in Poland's not doing amazingly right now. She's just getting older, she's getting very forgetful, and he's having a hard time seeing that, I think. And so he's very sentimental, and he's gotten a lot more sentimental recently, so I think that getting that photo album, which has a lot of pictures, or will have a lot of pictures of my babcha in it, he will absolutely love it, so. I feel good. Two down, three to go. Okay, so last night I stayed up way too late <laughs> finishing my audiobook that I've been listening to through the month of December, and that is Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. I absolutely loved this. I'm giving it five stars. I don't know if I would have given the book on its own a five star. I feel like I would. I really just loved the characters. I loved the story. Even though there wasn't much to it, I enjoyed so much about this. And when it comes to books like this, I often feel like it matters how you feel about the characters, the setting, the story itself. Because if it's not for you, you're not going to enjoy it. And so I can see this being a book that people are going to really enjoy. But I can also see this being a book that some people are not going to find as interesting. And they're not going to connect to the characters. And then they probably won't enjoy this nearly as much. This is a story that surrounds this place Tom Lake in Michigan where our main character spends the summer of her life being the main actress in this play called Our Town which a couple of people including my friend Martine have mentioned this is an actual play so now I really want to go watch Our Town and see what this play is all about but when we first meet our main character we are seeing her in the life she's living now uh, way later like in her 50s or something like that and she's retelling the story of this critical year of her life to her three daughters who are grown women. And this moment, this summer at Tom Lake really has shaped so much of her life. And we're seeing how that has happened through this relaying of the story. And of course, because she's telling the story to her three daughters, and if things had been different, their lives would probably have not been existent. She's telling him how these people, this time of her life really did shape what their life is like now. And I just think that it was, stunning. It was so beautifully written. Anne Patchett has a way of understanding characters and dialogue, character dialogue, that feels so incredibly realistic. It's just not a way that I see characters or dialogue written very often. It's very, very intuitive, very beautiful. Everything about this was just so beautiful. The sad parts were beautiful. At the end, I was crying. I don't want to say crying of happiness. It was sad. There were sad moments. But it was more crying because it was just such a beautiful story and it was coming to an end. And I cared so much about these characters. I cared so much about what had happened to them. And I love when a book can really bring me in to someone's life or someone's experience even though it's not real this is fictionalized <laughs> but i felt like i knew all these characters so well i loved how cozy and warm and kind it was and i know that there was some criticism a little bit about like it didn't seem very realistic but these people were in their 50s and 60s when they're relaying this story of course when you look back i'm sure there were moments that were horrific and people were awful a lot of times when you're looking back with that sentimental eye you just see things for what they have helped your life become and I just really really liked that perspective because I thought it was so gentle and so sweet and beautiful I thought this whole thing was beautiful and the narration by Meryl Streep was absolutely incredible absolutely incredible I almost feel like she and Tom Lake the book uh, belong together they belong together you can't have one without the other at this point in my mind I would be interested to see if I like the book just as much on its own or if it was the magic of Meryl Streep that made me love it even more because she brought so much to these characters and I will probably forever think of these characters through her voice <laughs> and the way she handled different characters like speaking through different characters it was just beautifully done like she is an incredible actress and she brought that acting to book narration and it was perfect 
and and Patchett's writing in this was perfect. I am a big fan of this one, even though I wasn't as big of a fan of the Dutch House. I still saw how beautiful her writing is. I saw that with a book where the characters really touched me and the story stood out for me, I would love it just as much as I have loved Tom Lake. So I don't think this is going to be for everyone. I think that this is one of those books where it's almost like slice of life in a sense. Like we do get a story throughout, but a lot of it is fairly slice of life that if you're not into that, you're not going to enjoy it quite as much because there's no real action to this. It is the retelling of a portion of a life. And I just thought it was stunning. Okay, so last year I read a book that I really enjoyed and it was all about the history of Christmas. It was a nonfiction book and I had a lot of fun reading. It, it was very scholarly but I learned so much. And one of the things I learned about was the tradition of wassailing. On Christmas day, there was a tradition of reversing roles. And so the people that worked for the really rich, wealthy lords and ladies or what have you, they were able to come to your house, knock on your door and say, feed me, fill me up with wine. And the lords, the masters had to welcome them in and serve them that day. So it was all about giving your workers a day of feeling like they were the ones who were being taken care of. And so wassailing was where they would go from house to house, these drunken people, <laughs> and ask for alcohol, ask for food. And when they'd get your house, they would sing until you let them in. And they'd get rowdy and rowdy and rowdier if you didn't. And of course, traditionally, you were supposed to let them in because this was the day of role reversal. I thought it was such a fascinating history to learn about that I wanted to learn one of these wassailing songs. So there is a song called Wassail Wassail All Over the Town and I just pulled up a YouTube video to hear what the tune is and I think I'm gonna learn this one. It's gonna take me a little while because I gotta remember the lyrics and stuff but it's like Wassail, wassail all over the town Our toasted is white and our ale it's and our ale it is brown. Wait. Our toasted is white and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made of the white maple tree with the wassail with the wassail with with the wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. So here is to Cherry to his right cheek. Pray God send our master a good piece of beef and a good piece of beef that may we all see with a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. And here is to Dobbin and to his right eye. Pray God send our master a good Christmas pie. And a good Christmas and a good Christmas pie that may we all see with a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. So here's to Broad Mary and to her broad horn. May God send our master a crop of good corn. And a good crop of corn that may we all see with a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. And here is to Phil Pell. And here is to Phil Pell and to her left ear. Pray God send our master a happy new year. And a happy new year as e'er he did see. With a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. Can't turn the page of time. I'm behind. I'm behind. And here is to Kali and to her long tail. And pray God send our master he may... Blah, blah, blah. And here is to Kali... <coughs> And here is to Kali and to her long tail. Pray God send our master, he may never fail. A bowl of strong beer, I pray you draw near. And our jolly was sail, it's then you shall. And our jolly was sail, it's then you shall hear. Come butler, come fill us a bowl of the best. Then we hope that our soul in heaven may rest. But if you do draw us a bowl, but if you do draw us a bowl, uh -huh. but if you do draw us, mm, nom, nom, nom. but if you do draw us, mm. but if you do draw us a bowl of the small, that's a weird sentence. But if you do draw a sub-bowl of the small, then down shall go butler, bowl, and all. Then here's to the maid in the lily white smock. Mm, but here's, mm. Then here's to the maid in the lily white smock, who tripped to the door and slipped down the back lock. Who's tripped to the door and pulled back the pin, for to let these jolly was sailors in. And then you go back to the beginning. If you're fast enough. And you go, was sail, was sail all over the town. Our toast it is white and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made of the white maple tree. With a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. With a wassailing bowl we'll drink to thee. Now I need to run around with a jug of beer and sing this <laughs> to my neighbors. <laughs> Poor neighbors. That would be hilarious. I could totally do that to these neighbors. Next year, next year. I'm going to perfect my wassail, wassail. And then I'm going to drunkenly 
sing to my neighbors one night next year for Christmas. This is perfect. Okay, so technically I'm still sick, obviously, and we're not supposed to go out in public. However, uh, we are gonna go drive around and look at Christmas lights because I need a little bit of Christmas joy and it's a way we can stay in the car, not go out and infect anybody and get to have a little bit of fun. So I'm very excited. We're gonna go look at Christmas lights. Christmas lights were nice. Getting out of the house though actually wore me out quite a bit. Even though I was just driving around looking at Christmas lights, it it exhausted me. <laughs> so we came home and I was playing Candy Crush for a long time. I should have been editing my video, but I just felt like playing Candy Crush. But now we're gonna watch the holiday to make up for the awful, awful Hallmark style Christmas movie we watched earlier. We watched Christmas Wedding Planner, and it was one of the worst. <laughs> if you love this movie, I apologize, but it was one of the worst Christmas movies I've ever seen. So we're going to make up for it by watching The Holiday. Cause... Which has violence, alcohol use, smoking, foul language, and sexual content. <laughs> look at that. Way to look up, Ma. <laughs> so um, this one is the one with Cameron Diaz and Jack Black and Jude Law and Kate Winslet those people so I'm excited about it we're gonna have fun despite the violence alcohol use smoking foul language and sexual content mama all right look how cute you look she's just tucked in there <laughs> you're just so cute hello it's Christmas Eve and I've been working on my day three vlog I want to get that up so it'll be out there for tomorrow I am feeling a lot more energized today. I'm still very congested, so I still got quite a bit of a head cold, but at least I'm feeling a little more active and I haven't really worked on anything else though. Just been kind of taking it easy. I would, I should start working on my dad's project. I'm supposed to have a phone call with my friend Sonia in sometime now. I'll message her in a little bit if she hasn't gotten hold of me yet, but that will be my third person that I'll have talked to. That I haven't talked to in a long time. I haven't talked to her in a long time. So that will be awesome. And then what else? I haven't, oh, I need to practice my song a little bit today. Practice the lyrics of my Was Sale Was Sale song. I woke up with that tune in my head. So it's definitely left an impression. Darling Desi, which is a booktuber that I enjoy for all the ambiance and all the things that she puts out there had a Christmas video that mom and I watched and we really enjoyed that. And I think that's pretty much it so far. My sense of taste and smell is still really minimal. So at the moment, even like eating Christmassy stuff or drinking Christmassy tea doesn't do anything for me because everything just tastes barely sweet or barely salty, but doesn't have much other flavor. So. I am just trying to get some stuff accomplished. So hopefully next time I chat with you, it's with an update from talking with my friend Sonia, and maybe I'll have started working on my dad's project. Although I wanna get this vlog done, so it goes up tomorrow morning. So that is my priority at the moment. But I wanna give you an update. Things are feeling better on my end, just not sounding better, and I don't get to taste anything delicious. So that's a bit of a bummer. On the 24th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. What'd she give you? What'd she give you? She gave me 
<gasps> a package. Oh, I wrapped you. Wrapped I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, is it a sticker? No, it's not. It's stickers. It's stickers. Woohoo! Woo, stickers. Sticker. Oh, what is it? Just one more chapter. I Cute. love bookish stickers. And that's just like my uh, my shirt, Bookstraver, Bookstraver, mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's cute. And then this is. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Ah! Uh -huh. Oh, Are they how cute! They're book oh. dragons. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah, so cute. These oh, are adorable. All the books I know. This is like, oh, this one down here. Yeah, it's got a stash. That is so cute, especially since I just read Dealing with Dragons. I actually just read Dragons as well. Final day, Jordan. 24. Final day. Big old thing. Wow, it's heavy. Is it? There's what a brick in there? in there. A brick? It looks like the size maybe of a it's brick. Coal. Coal. Maybe. <laughs> Did I put coal in there? Oh, no. Well, Jordan broke it. That was the end of the clock tower. I got chocolate. I got chocolate. Ooh. Hammond's Candy Cane Crunch, dark chocolate oh, with Hammond's sounds... Peppermint Frost. Oh, that's... Mm -hmm. oh, this looks so good. I'm so excited. Yummy. Dark chocolate. And Ooh. what is this? Stressless Winter Mint. Oh, oh how fun. I know you love tea. Yeah. I do. I'm really getting into tea. And that's stressless, girl. I get yeah. to do that. Caffeine-free, yeah. organic peppermint, lemon balm, ashwagandha. Ooh, and other soothing herbs. Soothing. Uh, soothe you, girl. Soothe in the herbs. Keep the stress at bay. This season with warm cup of soothing herbal tea. Yummy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Jordan you. drinks more tea than anybody I've ever met. Yeah, There's nothing good wrong with you. that. Okay. Are you ready for your last day, Ma? Yes. Classic cutie. Mm, she's a classic cutie. Oh. I didn't have to go look for this, it fit. <laughs> and it's wrapped really pretty. Let's see what we got here. You want your shirt off. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, a magnifying <laughs> glass. Oh, I need that, I, I'm blind awesome. as a bat. I actually wear it. I, I mean, I actually use, yeah, mom does use magnifying magnifiers. Oh, it. thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy. No, She's gonna have like a bag with a whole bunch of keychains yes. hanging off of it. Yep, all these all these cool keychains. That was the goal. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! There, since Cece was jealous, mom put her in her oh. shirt. <laughs> How's that feel, Cece? Does it feel as good as you thought it was going to feel? <laughs> Is it the most amazing experience you've ever had? Let me out. <laughs> Third phone call down. I just spent an hour and a half catching up with my friend Sonia, who I haven't talked to oh in well over a year. And it was wonderful. I got her story of all the things that have been going on the last couple of years. She has a new baby. Like, everything's very exciting. So, I also got a message from another friend who I haven't talked to in well over a year. And we're going to talk hopefully tomorrow. So, that's going to be four. And then I'll just have one more. And... I'm doing really well and it's nice to have like one every single day so that I get a chance to really catch up with the person I'm chatting with and spend that time talking. This is actually, even though it's not maybe one of the most exciting prompts for my advent calendar challenge to watch as far as a video, it's probably been my favorite prompt that I've ever done for my advent calendar challenge because it's just really, really nice to catch up with people that you don't talk to very often, that you love, that you care about, that you want to know what's going on in their lives. And yet time goes by so quickly. Like we were talking about them on the phone. We're like, I can't believe how, how long time goes. Like I've known Sonia for coming on 14 years. And yet we <laughs> have gone so many years without talking. Like it's just surprising how quickly time goes. And so I have been loving this, just loving this catching up with old friends. Okay, we are going to try and do some more catching up on Christmas Eve. Day 17. Day 17. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right, right? Hey, we're still doing it. We haven't stopped. We haven't stopped. We have a Santa gnome and a deer and a snowman. Let's do another one. Let's do number 18. 18, 18. We're kicking butt. Let's just keep going. We're on a roll. Here's number 19. Big part of the tree. And some Christmas presents, it looks like. 
And Cece wants to help. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I want to be part of it. I want to help. I want to be part of it. Pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Yep. Yeah. So let's see you. Let's see you do it, Cece. Do your magic. <laughs> <laughs> that one took a little longer. I don't know why, but it took a little bit longer. But we did it. Number 19. Should we just finish off the row? Number 20? Yeah. Okay. Let's get this little part here, and then we will have... Christmas Day, we can do the last... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Tomorrow. The last four tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. At least we got edges for this one. Okay, so that's our final section for the night. This looks like it's going to be a big snowman. A lot of look, they look like, yeah, he's dressed like Santa Claus. Ooh, stag, it's pretty. Christmas tree. You know what I want to do is play World of Warcraft. I know, I've been wanting to do that too. And they do Christmassy things. Wassail, wassail all over the town. And a happy new year. That's the <laughs> only words I know. <laughs> we are not doing anything except mom's reading and I am getting ready to do some stuff around the house. Like uh, work on my dad's project. Oh, yeah. And Ooh, do you know your my... Christmas song yet? Um, you were doing was pretty sail, good was sail, was sail all over the town. Our bread, it is white and our ale, it is brown. Our bowl, it is made of the white maple tree. No, white maple tree. And a something was sailing bubbly, blobly, blue. Well, you got at least <laughs> I have 80% to practice. right. I have to practice some more. Yeah, it takes a little time to memorize lyrics. <laughs> And good. I have been very fuzzy brained lately, so it's difficult for me at the moment. So you but you're feeling better today. I'm feeling better. I'm still really congested, still can't taste anything or smell anything. So that's a bit of a bummer because I can't really enjoy any good Christmas vittles. But <laughs> yeah. We don't have any vittles today, so it No vittles. We're kind of saving Christmas until the 30th or 31st, we decided. I think it was the 30th. 30, well, we're all not getting together till the 31st, everybody. Yeah, so. but we're, our Christmas is going to be on yeah, the 30th. Yeah, the 30th. So we're going to yeah. save our Christmas. Christmas till the thirtieth, when hopefully I can taste and smell again, and we and can go we shopping and buy Christmas shopping presents, <laughs> and do all the stuff we didn't get a chance to do. Yeah. You. Yeah. Oh, and then tonight I want to read us the Christmas guest by Peter Swanson. Jordan already read it a while ago, but I was thinking it'd be a fun Christmas Eve treat to read a thriller mystery. Is it long? No, it's like a hundred pages or something. So oh, okay. I'm gonna read that to us this evening, and. That's really it. We're just going to kind of do our little projects Take throughout the day. Easy, and yeah. mom's going to read and I'm going to do my stuff. So I'll give you an update later on when I'm working on dad's photo album. And I talked to my brother this morning who's also in Poland. Everybody's in Poland. We're not. And my brother's like, I'm sorry we didn't tell you. And I'm like, I couldn't have gone anyways. <laughs> Got COVID. But yeah. So, and you know, I don't have a full-time job yet, but it's good to see all the pictures and see them with the family and stuff like that. So I have been having a, oh, also I'm going to hopefully talk to my friend Alexis today. So that'll be my fourth golden ring, my fourth phone call. And I haven't yet figured out who my fifth is going to be because I just haven't thought about it, but I am at least making really good progress on that. Okay. So, so far today, I've really just been working at this point on booktube stuff and kind of planning what's going to happen with my 2024. I played a little round of a certain TBR game that is changing next year. So I just want to give you a heads up. Things are going to change. I'm excited about it, but it may not be everybody else's favorite, but I need to make it work. Like I have not been able to make that game work for me in a couple of years. And so somehow I've got to figure out how to make that game work so that I am actually reading those books and 
that I'm able to get to the other videos that I want to make each month. Anyways, now what I've been doing is that in the month of January and the first week of February is squash that series, this like massive round where we're doing this tournament of the champions sort of thing. And one person will win the whole thing. It will not be me. There's just no way I don't read nearly as fast or nearly as many books as many of the people that join squash that series. However, I still think it's a great way to start out the new year working through my series. And I went and updated my series list, which I'm sorry I'm not showing you, but I did it last night. And I crossed out the ones that I either have just decided I'm like gonna DNF these series, not because I didn't like them, but because I just don't see me getting back to them. And then of course the series that are completely finished that I have finished, I crossed those out as well. And then added some of the series that I didn't add to this list to begin with, like, I hadn't added the Dealing with Dragons, the Enchanted Forge Chronicles. I hadn't added the Lady Hardcastle series, which that one's got quite a few books in it. So I had just finished the first book recently. And Cemetery Boys, I didn't realize that that was actually a series. There's another book that's supposed to be coming out next year. So I added that. So on here, it shows that I have 95 series that I haven't completed. However, after I counted up all the crossed out ones, and subtracted those. I've actually got 77 series that I haven't completed. So that's quite a handful. And I think that starting 2024 off, working through some of those series, maybe even completing some would be fantastic. I'm gonna link the announcement video down below so you can go check it out. It's very exciting. And every week we're gonna play a different prior version of Squash That Series. And we don't know what version it's gonna be because she's gonna randomly choose it every week. And so, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen, but that also means I can't plan for January very well. I can make sure my series list is up to date and have my series available to me, but that also means that I won't get a chance to know what my actual TBR for Squash That Series is until the beginning of each week when we actually find out what version we're playing. Also, I can plan my January 1st and 2nd qualifying rounds books. The problem with that, I don't know that I'll be done with my advent calendar challenge by the time January 1st and 2nd comes around because I always end up going late with this. And I've got some books coming up that if I get them, they're pretty long books. So we'll see. Maybe I'll put a pause on this while I do those two days for qualifying. I don't know. To qualify for Squash That Series, to be in the bracket. Like you can still continue on and be a cheerleader for other players, but to qualify to be an actual part of the competition and still stand a chance of winning, you have to have read 500 pages and six hours of reading time within those first two days. So I don't know if I will be able to read 500 pages within those first two days. I doubt it because that's not a number that tends to be feasible for me as a reader. However, I can definitely read for six hours and because there are right now only 31 people that have signed up and the beginning at least, I stand a chance of being within the brackets. So we'll see what I end up doing. We'll see if that's possible. Maybe if I read some middle grades or some romances or something like that or some cozy mysteries, maybe I'll be able to make that 500 pages within two days. I'm not sure, but I can always try. I can always aim for it. All that being said, I pulled together all the physical books I own that are continuations and series, and I wanted to tell you about them because why not? You might be interested in seeing what series I actually own that haven't yet continued and where I'm at with them. So first, let's start with Robin Hobb, The Golden Fool. This is the second in the Tawny Man trilogy. And I loved the first book in this miniseries, Fool's Errand, so much last year. Like it was just such a wonderful read. I almost want to read it again. Well, I kind of want to start reading the whole series again, but I'm not going to do that. I do need to continue on with Golden Fool. And so I'm hoping to get to this sometime in 2024. Will I start the year out with this one? I'm not sure. This one is over 700 pages. So if I could read this in two days, I would definitely hit the qualifying prompt. I just don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't see that happening. And I don't know that I can read this one that quickly. The next is Searching for Dragons by Patricia Reed. This is the second in the Enchanted Forest Chronicles, and I just finished Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Reed not too long ago. I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. This is a fun middle grade series, and I could see myself picking this up in the first two days. That could be something. Let's see how many pages this is. This is 242 pages, so if I could read this quickly, well, that would get me well on my way to 500 pages within the first two days. And middle grades tend to read a little faster, so that is a possibility. <laughs> I don't know why I think I can read 500 pages in two days. Maybe 
graphic novels, maybe. <laughs> I don't have any physical graphic novels though. Then I've got the second book in the Hannah Swenson series. This is Strawberry Shortcake Murder. I also would need to read Candy for Christmas, which was one of my possibilities for the advent calendar challenge that didn't come up. That's a short story that would probably go very quickly. And so I would read that first and then I would read this one. And these read quickly. So I could see this being a possibility. This one is uh, a little over 300 pages. So that might be a good one to try out. Another one that would read really quickly is The Laughing Corpse by Laurel K. Hamilton. This is the second in the Anita Blake series, and I've been wanting to reread this series for a while. So I was supposed to read this on one of my TBRs last year. It didn't happen, but these read so fast, especially since they are a reread. So this is a really good possibility. This is 290 something pages. Maybe I should read this. Maybe I should start out with this. Then I've got the second book in the Athena Club series, European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewomen by Theodore Goss. I was supposed to finish this back in like uh, September, October, sometime this year. This was supposed to be, this whole series was supposed to be done and that didn't happen. So it'd be good if I got to this one. I just don't know that I'll be reading this within January although I probably should. Then we've got one that was a gift from Paige, from Pages of Page, one of my favorite, favorite booktubers. And that is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. I have wanted to continue this series. It is middle grade. The first one was fantastic. I just can't wait to continue on. So I'm hoping this will be just as great as the second one, Amari and the Night Brothers. I would like to get to this one. So maybe this is a book for January. Maybe this is a book for this readathon. The second one is The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. The first one was The Gilded Ones. And I loved that book. I got really mixed reviews because of I think since it's a YA and it had some really dark themes some people just felt like it was a little too violent I think and I really just loved it so I would be really interested in continuing on this series I love the characters I like the setting I liked all the action this would be a good one to move on to and then a gift from my amazing friend Magda <sighs> House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. This is a huge book. I really did end up loving House of Earth and Blood. So it would be nice to move on to the next one in that series, especially because the next book is coming out, I think fairly soon. And it's got a gorgeous color too. These books are so pretty. I just love how they look. And yeah, look at the end pages. Ah, that's so beautiful. So maybe this will happen in January. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely won't be reading all of these. That's for darn sure. Next, I had started rereading The Hunger Games last year and I just read The Hunger Games. So I could continue on with Catching Fire. This is another one that would read very quickly because I've already read it before. And these are so fast paced, this dystopian YA. They're just really easy to get into. So I probably could read this one in the first two days and that would be a good choice. Next is the second book in the Inspector Gamache series, A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny. And that is, a mystery so this might be a good one mysteries tend to read a little faster for me so it's possible that I could read this one then a book that I actually do hope I read in January so I can finish out this series is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin but this is not a fast choice this is not a book that will go quickly it would give me an opportunity to finish out the series I loved the first book absolutely loved the first book five 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 stars the second book I really loved too it was like a four star or something along those lines. And even though it couldn't do what the first book did because the element of surprise in the first one was what made it so special or one of the things that made it so special, I still really loved it. And I'm looking forward to finishing out this series. So I really do hope that I can make this one work for January or the first week of February for this readathon because it would be nice to finish out a series and finally get to see what happens in this one. Another book that I'd like to read, and technically it would be finishing out a series for now. I don't know if Sonali Dev is planning on doing more books in this series, but the final book in the Rajay family series is The Emma Project, and I really have loved how messy and fun these retellings of different Pride and Prejudice books have been. And I'd love to finish this out with The Emma Project. Another series that probably would be a good choice because these books are so quick to read would be the next in the Shadowfall series. I think it's Whispers at Moonrise is the one I need. And this is the fourth book in the series. The only problem with that is I almost feel like I need to go back and read some of the prior books like Taken at Dusk I've read, but oh, I kind of feel like I should go back and read that one because 
my memory on this series is starting to get pretty fuzzy and I just don't know if I go into this if I'll be like wait what what the whole time you know like I don't remember this I don't remember that so if it comes to something where I need to read multiple books in a series or paranormal works maybe I'll read both of these and I still think it would go really fast because I remember reading the first three books in the series and each of those books was just super super quick another series where I feel like I could stand to read the first book in the series but I probably would just continue on and that is the Britfield series by C.R. Stewart. I read the first one a couple of years ago and I really loved it. This is a middle grade series. This is Britfield and the Rise of the Lion, but would I need to go back and read the first one? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Possibly. I remember some things about the first one, but not everything. So that's a really pretty cover. It looks really good on the screen here. <laughs> So this one probably wouldn't be quite, oh, well, it's big writing. It's just a big book. Like, would this be very quick? And do I want to read this one considering I kind of would like to reread the first one? But this was also a gift from my friend Magda. So it would be good to get some of my gifts. Then I've got one that very likely will not end up happening. <laughs> I keep putting this one off. This is Lasher by Anne Rice. This is the second in the Mayfair Witches series. And I really did like The Witching Hour a lot. It did have elements to it. You know, Anne Rice does go for sexual taboos and there were some elements to it that were just uncomfortable, but it was an epic story overall and I would like to continue on. So I have this one, it's a big one. Will I end up reading it? Probably not right now, but at some point in the future, unless a prompt comes up where this works out perfectly. It's just so big and the series is fairly slow moving, so it just wouldn't be one of those books that I would be able to get through pretty quickly. So I don't know if that'll end up happening, but I have it just in case. And then the final book that I physically own that is the next in a series is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the second in the Legendborn cycle. Really loved Legendborn. Can't wait to continue on this series. Have heard that this is a really good continuation. And this was a gift from one of my newer and very generous subscribers, Jenny. So I'm really, really hoping to get to this one at some point. And these YA fantasies tend to go a little faster. And so I'm kind of hoping that I could get to this one as well. It is a big book though. I have so many thick continuation of series. Like all my series continuations are really thick. I don't have any manga continuation series. I don't have any graphic novels continuations that I can like show you and say, hey, this is the next in that series. That would be great because that would help me get to my 500 books. I obviously have many more series that I need to continue that I don't physically own the books. And in those first two days, especially the qualifying days, I might try and pick some of those up, like the Primating Agency series where you know, I married a lizard man, I married all those things. I am very far along in that series and it would be easy to pick up those once I get through them very quickly. And that would be a good way to get the page count up. So I might pick up I Married a Dryad is the next main book in that series that I haven't read yet. There's also a little small book called I Married Wanjin, who's one of the characters from a previous book. So that's a mini book. And then the next one just came out and it's I Married an Incubus. So I could possibly read those and get my 500 pages in that way. I also do have graphic novels, some manga, maybe I finally continue on Fruits Basket. Like I have other books that I could read in that first two days that would help me get my numbers up for 500 pages. So I might just be clever and pick up some of those from the library so that I have options that are doable to help me with those first two days. But as much as I can in January for Squash That Series, I would like to read the books that I physically own. So I've got a lot, we've got a lot to choose from. Fingers crossed that I actually get some of these series caught up or completed.
Okay, so I've been sorting photos and I did finish going through this box right here of pictures. So I've got this whole stack of Amy pictures, it's a big stack. And then this is my mom's side of the family. So like that's more our side. This is a stack of just pictures of my dad. This is a stack of my dad's side of the family, people I don't know. Um, older pictures. This is like, this is my dad, my babsha and my uncle Roman. And then these are my dad's friends and people who are friends of my dad. So I am working on it and I haven't yet started this box, but that will be next. Oh, look at one of my favorite pictures of Amy, little baby Amy. Look at how cute she was. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention that I did talk to my friend Alexis on the phone for around an hour today so we caught up and it's been over two years i think since we talked and so it was really really nice catching up hearing how everything is going with her and then talking about all the changes that have happened in our lives in the last couple of years so that is person number four so close to having five golden rings and i still haven't even thought about who i want to call so i will think about that and then i'll figure it out and then i will do that Okay, so since it's Christmas technically, but we're waiting until the 30th to really celebrate our Christmas, and we can't eat anything delicious. Well, mom can, but I can't eat anything delicious anyways. No taste. I know, I have no taste, no smell. One of the ways we thought would be fun to celebrate today is for me to read her a book. Look how lethargic my plant looks back there. It's not looking very happy. <laughs> It needs just trimming, I think. You've been yeah, watering it, right? It's looking sad. Anyways, I just distracted. Okay, I want to read her The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. And one of the things that I read or heard somebody say or read or something <laughs> was that Peter Swanson wrote this to be a really short story so that you could read it aloud on Christmas time. And I have mentioned it a couple of times, but it was a Victorian tradition to read ghost stories during the holidays now this isn't a ghost story but i think this is kind of like the next best thing a fun thriller mystery that we'll see if we can guess what it is but i've heard that this is just really wild and crazy and a lot of fun so let's see how it goes and let's see if either of us figure it out so there's mom ready to listen to the christmas guest are you excited are you nervous it's a mystery do you think you're gonna solve it no I like to hear the story. I don't try to figure it out. Yeah, so we'll I see. I get immersed in story time. That's right. And of course, I put an ambiance video up on the TV. Cece's ready. She's ready, ready to listen to find out. Cece, mm -hmm. you gonna solve the mystery?
house by, although she had been. Okay, so we're 20 pages in. Initial thoughts. Well, it's scary because it seems like the brother may have killed somebody and now he, he's not really... Isn't that too obvious, though? Yeah. A little too obvious. This girl... But this girl looks like somebody that's been killed. She is this girl who's going to school in the UK, but she's from California. And this other girl, Emma, who lives there and has like this old family home, invites her to go spend Christmas. That feels suspicious too. Invite, Yeah, randomly invites her to go spend Christmas with the family. And <laughs> she's hearing about how there was a murder and they're suspicious of Emma's brother. And this girl, that's the main character, looks just like this the girl, that, the was girl that was killed. So that's where we're at so far. Hmm. We don't what know. are you thinking? Because you like to think. I like to just listen. I mean, I just don't understand. Like, well, for the one, the brother, that seems a little too convenient. But two, like, why does this other girl really want to invite her? Because it made it sound like, I don't know the name of our main character. Does she have a name? Have they said anything? Our main character, it sounded like Emma didn't like her at all. Or at least they didn't really have a strong relationship. So why is Emma inviting her to her family's house for the yeah. holidays? Yeah, no clue. No clue. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we just finished chapter one. We are 40-something pages in. What do you think so far? Are you scared? I think, no, I think the girl that's visiting with her crush on the brother is Ridiculous. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> the main character. They, they, she doesn't know him from shit. He's and a, she's in love with him, though. And, yeah, she just <laughs> met him. He's gorgeous. He might have killed a girl, and she's just in love with him. And anywhere he goes, she wants to go. So if he goes to the pub, let's go. I mean, it just seems ridiculous. And yet her friend was almost attacked in the woods. And yet she's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Can we yeah. go to the pub? <laughs> so we're just about to start Chapter 2, which is where I've heard shit hits the fan. That's what you heard? Yeah, that's what oh, I heard. scary. Yeah, I was watching... Uh, Kayla from Books and Lola read this and she said chapter two is where stuff gets wild. It's already wild. <laughs> the girls are ridiculous. Yeah, pretty ridiculous. So Emma is E, E is Emma because they yeah. call her E or yeah. Emma. Okay. So that is where we're at and we're about to start the wild part. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> that was the last entry in the diary followed by 50 or so white pages. Okay, it's just after 11, and I have finished the Christmas guest. Thoughts. So have I, too, because I got to hear it. <laughs> Thoughts. Yeah. It kind of left me hanging. I don't think it did. I think it it gives you... I mean, like, obviously, it's not going to give you a really definitive... Okay, so, no, not like a hanging thing. Um, You're just still wondering what exactly happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say that this is a book where it kind of very Alfred Hitchcock esque i mean i don't want to give anything away but like and i don't think it gives anything away but like there's still an element to it where you're like hmm yeah. Le leaves you using your own imagination did they they mentioned alfred hitchcock they did mention alfred hitchcock in the book but did you have fun listening to it on christmas well yeah my daughter read it to me she has a very good reading voice and um I started getting tired though. <laughs> yeah, mom was like, <laughs> Amy looks over, are you awake? Are you are gonna you be awake? able to are you gonna be able to stay awake? <laughs> and so yeah, it was fun. I mean it it probably was like a three point five stars or something like that. What would you say? Yeah. Three, three point five? No, it was more interesting than three. I think it was three point five. Yeah. It was a nice short little story. And it was fun to read it out loud to you on Christmas and us feel like we get a little bit of a, a little Christmas Christmassy. Holiday. The mystery wasn't that surprising, though. Like, were you surprised by it? Was there a point where you were like, oh! It, I mean, I kind of thought what happened happened. Yeah. 
It was gruesome. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to I was going to say it was gruesome. <laughs> it was gruesome. But did you, did you at any point think that what would happen? Did you at any point think well, that what was, ended up happening was going was gonna to happen? No, not at all. Because mm. when we, when you finished chapter one and started chapter two, it was. A surprise. Yes. That, that was, I wasn't was that surprised. surprised. But I don't try to think things. Yes, I know. I, I didn't feel overly surprised, and I wasn't that surprised at what ended up being the truth. But it was still a lot of fun. Like, it was a lot of yeah. fun. And I would read from Peter Swanson again. I've never read anything by Peter Swanson. And I think this is a gorgeous book. And it's Jordan's. We borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we both gave it 3.5 stars. I think that's exactly what I give it. Yeah, and I think that this is a fun way if you want to share this book with your family during Christmas time. Kind of fun was just sitting here with an ambiance video on and reading a, a book. Fun way to spend Christmas. It was fun. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Good morning. It's December 26th, and I wanted to give you a bit of an update. COVID update, I'm still congested, quite congested, and can't taste or smell anything, which... Uh, that part I'm not enjoying. I'm not enjoying, well, actually, I haven't enjoyed the whole thing. <laughs> but I really wish I could taste or smell things. I'm missing the taste of food. And that's that. It seems like COVID is wanting to stick around and doesn't want to go away. So we're making friends here in this body. And as far as my advent calendar challenge is going, I have made an executive decision. So I have finished four of my golden rings, and I think that I want to call my cousin Shauna. I still haven't decided. I have quite a few people that I could call, and I'm not feeling very social today, so I think that I'm going to hold off on that fifth call until I'm feeling a little more like, oh, I really do want to call somebody, and I'm excited to talk to them. As far as my song goes, that's something that you know, I'm going to keep working on, and I do need to work on the lyrics, keep trying to learn the lyrics, and it just takes a little bit of time. It's not like I've been putting a lot of work into it, but, you know, I have to go over the song over and over again. So my goal for that song, for the Wasail Wasail song, is to be able to sing it perfectly next year. So next year I can go wasailing to a couple of my family and friends' houses and I think that would be really funny. And I think they would find it pretty funny too. So I'm gonna make sure that I work on that song so that next year I'll know all the lyrics to it. And then as far as my dad's photo album goes, I don't wanna rush it. I feel like I would try and rush it if I needed to get it done before sending out this video. And now that I've put everything out, I still have to go through the rest of my pictures and then start going through them and seeing what I actually want to put in the photo album because there's so many pictures. There's just so many of them. And then organize them and I want to make it look nice. I'm still going to show you part of that process in the upcoming vlogs, but I'm not going to hold this vlog hostage to getting that done. So at this point, I think I'm going to consider my activities started, if not completed for the sake of this vlog. And I'm gonna move on to the next day because I wanna make sure that I'm getting some of these bigger reads in, especially if I end up pulling them, because come January 1st, I would like to start Squash That Series, which is my plan. Like I need to be able to qualify within those first two days of January. And it'll be harder if I am focusing on this Advent Calendar Challenge. Not that I'm not enjoying it, and not that I don't love it, but I want to keep moving forward with it. For day number nine, the line of the song is, Voices singing, let's be jolly. And for that, I've got Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Duray. And this is the non-Christmas book. And this is a big one. So this one's... Oh, you know, it looks bigger than it actually is. It's like 300 and something pages. 366. It just looks a lot bigger than it is. So that's actually a good size book. And I have been interested in this book for a while, so I would be happy if this one came up. My activity is something I'm going to have to figure out an alternative to if I get it. Because it's Christmas karaoke, so that's for singing. And I don't think I'm up for Christmas karaoke, even in the house right now. Like, I don't sound good. I still sound froggy. So <laughs> I'm just like, how am I going to make this one work? Finally, the Christmas book is A Holly Jolly Ever After by Sierra Simone and Julie Murphy. And this is the second book in the, I don't know what series it is, but I read the first book last year, I think for this Advent Calendar Challenge, maybe, maybe not. And I really did enjoy it. I liked it a lot. So it's going to be a fun, good, smutty, Christmassy time. And that one will be on audiobooks. So that'll actually give me 
time to listen to it while I'm working on my photo album. So that would be a good choice if that came up. So let's find out what's gonna happen for day number nine. I'm almost to the bottom row, I'm very excited. Just don't be the activity, because I don't wanna have to figure that out right now. My brain is still very fuzzy. Mom was asking me a question about some, about the cheese, the stinky cheese party, which I never told you about either. That was fun. It was fun to try all these different stinky cheeses at the Christmas party I went to. And I was sitting there trying to like pull that, not that I couldn't remember the stinky cheese aspect of that party, but it took me a while to like have all the details to be able to tell mom all about it because my brain is just like, Bleh. just, just, it's just frup, doesn't want to work. <laughs> Okay, so number nine, let's take all the choice out of my hand and let my advent calendar choose for me. Okay, there's our cute little reindeer and they're gonna give me, please, 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 please. <gasps> Ah, oh, all right, good. The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby DeRay. I'm excited about this. I actually am really excited about this. Would it have been nice to have the audiobook now that I think about it? Yeah, sure, but I am happy that it's a non-Christmassy book. Not that I don't want to read more Christmassy books right now, but I am ready for something a little different. And now that I know that it's only 366 pages, I'm not feeling quite as worried about it. I was like, this book is so big. It's gonna take me forever to get through it but I think it'll be okay. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read The Girl with the Louding Voice and if you enjoyed it. Also, let me know how your Christmas went, how your holidays have gone. Is there anything that you've done that's really unique, that stood out to you that you wanna share? Or have there been some really wonderful sentimental moments? I've been loving calling my family and friends, the people I haven't talked to in a long time. It has been amazing. And it makes for like, hour to two hour phone calls which is wonderful but then like today i'm a little <laughs> I'm a little socialed out so i just think that it's a wonderful way to spend the holidays and it's been making me feel very special if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens on day nine of the 12 days of christmas carol advent calendar challenge thank you so much for watching and i will see you later bye